So tell me a little bit about your history. Well, I grew up a little bit north of Seattle uh, in one of the suburbs. You know, I was adopted. I had a fairly normal childhood. Um, and my dad died when I was 17, and I kind of went off the rails a little bit. So I started playing punk rock. I found a community in, mm -hmm. in playing punk rock and uh, uh, started drinking, did that for a while, even though I never really liked really? alcohol much. Yeah. Um, dabbled around with some other drugs, MDA, uh, pills, uh, quaaludes were still around back then. Uh, Turpin hydrate you could still get, wasn't banned yet. Uh, man, it would knock your doors off. <laughs> then I sort of lost uh, hope in uh, the whole music thing and started taking pills, Percocets and opiate pills mm -hmm. and drinking a lot. And uh, that was where I really connected with the drug thing. The opiate pills was like, ah, oh, that feels good. Yeah. I really like that. That's your biological predisposition, in, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know if calling addiction a disease is actually a good thing because it, it kind of removes all the agency from the person for their uh, behavior. I see what you're saying. But a person that has a biological predisposition for a certain drug will like it way more, more than, than a normal else. person. Okay. And uh, uh, I didn't really have any optimism. I didn't have really any faith that um, life was going to get better for me. Like, I didn't want that life particularly, right? And so when the needle showed up in front of me, I was like, yeah, why not? Um, what was your specific drug of choice? Heroin. Heroin? Yeah. Yeah, heroin was the number one thing, and I would, I liked shooting coke too, but I would only do that probably once or twice a year okay. because it would get really bad, really fast. Uh, and then I quit in 1999. I finally um, crashed and burned or hit bottom mm -hmm. um, is what they say in, in the program. How hard was the initial sobriety process? Uh, it was pretty, it was pretty tough. Uh, I think I think some of my friends that went to prison and stuff like that mm -hmm. had it tougher. Yeah. You know, uh, I was in the hospital and they had to, you know, basically train me how to start walking again. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got out and I was lost and confused and started going to uh, NA and AA meetings. And, uh, you know, somebody along the line said, you should go back to school. Mm -hmm. And so I did, and ended up in a writing course somehow. And somebody said, you're pretty good at this writing thing. Yeah. And uh, I got a master's degree in creative writing and wrote a couple of books, and that's where I'm at now. <laughs> that's <pretty> phenomenal. <laughs> you know, I, I've been getting various perspectives on uh, the, the, the drug culture, the drug epidemic, whatever whatever word of choice people wanted to label it, I guess the homelessness, so to speak. Um, and then, that, you know, there are several approaches that a lot of people feel like they have that will fix the issue. Are, are there any, of, any approaches that stand out to you that you're kind of like, eh, not so much, you know, coming from your experience? Well, uh, uh, here's, here's my feeling on that thing. In my experience, probably 95 or more percent of people who have gotten clean, yeah. it, it, it doesn't happen unless you hit bottom, unless you crash and burn and get just your ass beat bad. Yeah. That's the point where you can change directions. Yeah. That's the point where you can start picking up those pieces and putting a person back together into some kind of functional form. It's, it doesn't happen any other way. I've never seen it. I've never seen anybody that's shooting heroin or shooting coke or smoking crack or meth. I've never seen anybody say, gee, this is kind of unhealthy. I'm going to stop doing this and start juicing. <laughs> and that's what makes it so hard, I think, for government to address this problem. Gotcha. But they're giving them these little shacks to live in and they're giving them these things. and. 
it just doesn't quite make sense to me because it's not helping them hit bottom. So, so it's safe to say you're not probably the biggest fan of, say, the idea of a needle exchange. Well, yeah, if it's an exchange. Gotcha. Right? Uh-huh. But the needle exchange used to be you'd bring in two needles, used ones, and they'd give you two new ones. Bring in 10, you'd get 10. Okay. Bring a grocery bag full like I used to do. Yeah. They'd give you a grocery bag full. Now, they don't require the drug addicts to bring their needles back. So, you know, that's why they're all over the city. So how much do you think accountability, because you, you mentioned something about accountability, you know, it, like having a one-to-one -one exchange would require at least a minimal level of accountability. Um, when you were using, did you, that concept for you, was it something that rang clear? Was it something you even thought about? Or was it? Not really, not when I was using. Yeah. I mean, accountability is kind of a thing that normal people do, you know? Yeah. When you're in the middle of addiction, you're not really capable of thinking rationally. You're not really capable of, of uh, engaging in normal people behaviors, you know? Yeah. And on top of that, you just don't give a shit. shit. Yeah. I'm happy that I had to go through what I went through, um, even the physical stuff, yeah. because it forced me to change, to take my life in a new direction.